But what happened at today's meeting was completely unexpected to some. It views Tom Vekar is in the newsroom, and uh, Tom has kind of turned into a love fest. A bit of a bizarre one. President Peavy may be gone from the CPUC, but trouble will surely follow him. At his final meeting, controversial California Public Utilities Commission President Michael Peavy was given a love fest, 30 straight speakers. You've always, always watched out for the interests of those who have no voice at the table. The elderly, the infirm, the jobless, the disabled, and the poor amongst us. So on the behalf of our children and grandchildren, thank you for your service to California and the planet Earth. Your name now has gained the same levels of folks like the Pope and Ali uh, and, and the energy circles. But as this internal CPUC memorandum shows, the first 30 speakers were there by invitation with no enforcement of the three-minute comment rule, something Senator Jerry Hill noticed. Most of these people who made the comments have some connection to Mr. Peavy in that they had uh, a relationship with him. He's put them in positions that they have. Half the people are here to congratulate you on your retirement, and there's, not say a little more than half, but the others are here to make sure you're retiring. So <laughs> I would like to uh, present this dark rose to you in, uh, as an example of dark times. Uh, when a correct transmission of energy is figured out, it will bloom and change. You recognized our problem. You heard two years of testimony. It became so evident that you were that there were serious issues with smart meters that you you enacted a residential opt out. In 2012, you set up public participation hearings in five locations throughout the state: Bakersfield, Los Angeles, San Clemente, Santa Barbara, Santa Rosa. The hearings were attended by hundreds. Some drove for hours to tell ALJ Yip Hikagawa heart-wrenching accounts of personal injury, illness, financial hardship, and homelessness. So after inviting people to inform you of the extent and gravity of the problems produced by your misguided program, you now have proposed decisions that address none of them. For example, a former meter reader warned that smart meters were causing fires. PG knows that they do catch on fire when they are remotely turned back on when a customer who is delinquent in their bill finally pays their bill. These meters catch fire. They know it, and they are covering it up. Larry Nickel died on July 9, 2010, in a house fire that started a day after a smart meter was installed on his home. Winifred Thomas, a former Hewlett Packard professional, too ill to work, homeless, living alone in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Sue Bazo, former UC Berkeley graduate student, unable to continue school, moved eight times, lives on disability, fighting for her life in Arizona. More people that you have ignored in their words. Amy Hartley. Amy Hartley. Santa Rosa. I always slept like a baby. Eleven smart meters were newly installed and I started experiencing insomnia and darting headaches. Lawrence Gust. Santa Barbara, I'm an electrical engineer. Doctors are reporting that 18% of their patients have health problems because of the smart meters. The power supplies for these meters needs to be changed. Dorothy Sheldon, San Clemente, my doctor warned me against wireless technology because of my pacemaker. I have to opt out. I can't afford it. Jenny Lee, Santa Rosa, fees are too burdensome for the elders in my community, some of whom cannot afford their medications. Dr. Toral Jelter, Santa Rosa, severe tinnitus, fatigue, and neuropathy at home and at work. I left my home and closed my private practice. I have lost my home and livelihood to smart meters. Julie Levine, Los Angeles, diarrhea, vomiting, pulsing, ringing, pain in my ears, heart racing, palpitations, disorientation, nervousness. Forced from my home, living in a minivan. Roger Knox, Santa Barbara, the guy who installed the smart meter, was dressed up like a hazmat operator. What does that say about the safety of the meters? Pat Sorensen, Santa Rosa, cancer survivor, effects of radiation treatments have been debilitating. I do not need exposures to the 89 radiating meters surrounding my apartment. Dave Hubert, Dave Hubert. Santa Rosa, at least 3% of the population is electrosensitive. That's over a million Californians. 
Joan Renahan. Santa Barbara, computer panel of our new washing machine, got burned out, TV, home computer, and printer don't work. Sparks come out of our electrical outlets, headaches, heart palpitations, and tachycardia. Luis Stampo, Luis Santa Rosa, I am hypersensitive to EMS, ear pain, nausea, and headaches caused by constant smart meter emissions coming through my walls. My small business is in ruins. Stacy Hall. Santa Barbara. The smart meter caused my 75-year-old mother to have tachycardia. She has to have heart surgery. Julia Ostarch. Santa Rosa. Headaches, tinnitus, extreme sleep deprivation, bruxism, muscle cramps, heart arrhythmia since the smart meter rollout in my neighborhood. Shane Gregory. Los Angeles. Lost my home in 24 years. Sleeping on a park benches, in cars, couch surfed. Four brain surgeries. Civil and human rights have been violated. Rebecca Helsler, Santa Rosa. Suiting pain in my head, arrhythmia, pressure in my chest after 16 smart meters put outside my condo. Had to leave. I have been isolated in the mountains. Louis Donovan. Louis Donovan. San Clemente. Hospitalized four times for cardiac arrhythmia after a meter was installed near my bedroom window. The meter stopped my heart. Me and my two neighbors opted out. My heart is better now. Well, my heart would speed up to do about 170 beats a minute, and uh, I could normally control uh, any arrhythmia that I would have before just by meditation and relaxing. And uh, the, the smart meter, I couldn't. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't bring it down. And you found that when you were in that electromagnetic field, your heart was yes. going to high rates of arrhythmia. Yes, and it wouldn't happen all the time. It happened uh, the first time was, well, was eight months after the meter was installed, yep. and then the second time it occurred was six months after that, and then it went four months after that, and then went two months after that. Was so you became more and more sensitive. More and s more sensitive as the time went by. And you found that when you were able to remove the meter, that you did recover. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Pat Wrigley. Pat Wrigley. Santa Rosa. I was a meter reader for nine years, illegally fired because I wouldn't keep quiet when I knew smart meters catch fire and PG&E covers this up. Andrea Walker, Andrea Walker, Los Angeles, even though I have opted out, the grid is still going through right through my house. It keeps me awake at night. Shelly Masters, Shelley Masters, Santa Rosa, fatigue, depression, burning skin, drooping eye, hair loss, racing heart, nosebleeds. I have a hard time doing my work. My quality of life has disappeared. Ben Seville. San Clemente. Eleven smart meters were installed under my young neighbor's bedroom window. He couldn't sleep, started crying, screaming, banging his head on his crib. He went to live with relatives who don't have a meter and his symptoms went away. We can choose not to use other wireless devices, but we have no choice about the smart grid. Amy O'Hare. Santa Rosa, I am a mother. No parent should have to face opt-out fees to protect a child from smart meter emissions radiating from the other side of a bedroom wall. Technical industries that profit from this damage say that's okay because it's not been tested. Excuse me, that's not only illogical, it has been tested. 60 years of hard science international reports have already proven health damage by radiation. It therefore follows that the frequencies thousands of times stronger cause much more damage to the DNA and all life forms and are especially dangerous for children. Please consider the health of, it's a lot more than 3% of the population, I'll tell you. And people are getting sick and they don't know why. And it's the smart meters and it's the Wi-Fi. And your job description is to protect us. And you know about this and I'm begging you for some help. Okay, Steve Seltzer. Be followed by Laurel Carroll. Laura Carroll, excuse me. Uh, Steve Seltzer speaking for United Public Workers for Action and No Nukes Action. I mean, I, I don't uh, want you to go away with retirement from this commission because really you belong in jail. Oh, okay, that's yeah, enough. You belong in jail. And you had an hour and a half here of accolades, but none of the corruption came.
Look, it's a it's a public meeting, and I don't mind you speaking, but I don't like the accusatory things you you're accusing me of personally. Just talk generally. I you could speak, but you can't. But let's can you? I'm counseling you to use your words. Choose your words carefully. That's all Look, I'm asking. This is a public forum. I'm I pay as a taxpayer to be here and to have a right to speak under the Brown Code and other laws. I'm now, I, I say I'm that asking you to be polite. Is I, that a, is that a reason Look, the newspapers are talking about emails between these commissioners and the public utilities and the and PG&E. That's an issue of corruption. So you're on the I mean, this is—I mean, this is a, a system problem in which PG&E and Southern California Edison and these utilities are running this commission. So you're on the list to so speak about smart meters. Is, so I'm really interested I'm about in hearing what your meters. comment yes. is on that topic. Yes, I'm about Thank smart you. meters. Yes. What about the smart people meters? of California have a right to a commission that's not tainted with corporate relations and corporate interests, and that's exactly what's going on here. That's exactly what's going on here. Right. That's why you should be elected, and that's why there should be criminal prosecution by the Attorney General of any commissioners that have conflicts of interest. And also, you have a record of being a bully, a workplace bully, against the staff of the PUC who are intimidated, who are threatened by you. You laugh? They had a private meeting here, which was leaked to the press in the San Francisco Chronicle, about how they were afraid to speak up as a result of the workplace bully led by you, the chair of the PUC. Now, what kind of operation is this? When workers here who want to do a job for the people of California, who want to be responsible, are afraid to speak out. Okay, that thank you. shows. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, moving on to the energy agenda, um, item 60 and 60A. This we discussed at our last meeting. This is the matter that brought some people here this morning. It's the, it's the smart meter opt-out charges and fee. Um, item 60 and 60A are the proposed and alternate decisions regarding smart meter opt-out charges and fees. Okay, uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. aye.